I recommend Children of the Zodiacs, a disappointingly underplayed tactical RPG by indie developer Cardboard Utopia. We need more games like this. Games by indie publishers willing to take risks, but also tactical RPGs in the tradition of my personal ideal, Final Fantasy Tactics. If you are a fan of FFT, you should skip the rest of this recommendation and just play this game now. I will preface this with two words of warning. Turns in this game are squad-focused, as in Disgaea, Hour of Darkness, and not unit-focused, as in Final Fantasy Tactics. And, the story does not hit the ground running to capture your attention in quite the same way as Delita's first appearance does. You'll have to give it a few scenes to get rolling, but I promise this game delivers narrative. Now, for those of you who are still on the fence, want more information, or haven't played Tactics, let me give you my rundown. And remember, I'm prefacing all of this with a strong recommendation. Children of the Zodiacs is a tactical RPG. RPG in the sense that your characters will grow and become more diverse as they gain experience. RPG also in the sense that the game intends that you follow your character through a story of challenge and personal growth. I know that last part gets left off too often these days. Tactical, um, in the sense of it being a tactical RPG, means that you will be commanding a squad, not just one character. Typically this means giving orders to two or more characters each turn. Tactical also defines the interface of the game. Your characters will occupy spaces on a game board not dissimilar from a chessboard simulation of castles, sewers, open streets, etc., with diverse elevation, obstacles, and all the parts that you might expect. Your enemies will also occupy spaces on this board, and each turn you will order your characters across this board, trying to get within striking range of your opponent without overextending or leaving yourself vulnerable to an ambush. Beyond that, the combat is mostly standard RPG fare, with attacks depleting characters' hit points and certain attacks covering an area that might hit multiple opponents. The real beauty of a tactical RPG is in positioning, facing, and area of attack. Where standard side-by-side -side RPG combat can handily challenge players to think about opponent weaknesses, limited resources, and other um, number-centric worries, only a tactical RPG can access the part of your brain that tells you to retreat to a high place to fire, get an obstacle between you and your foe, uh, keep your back to the wall. Children of the Zodiacs handles these mechanics a bit differently. You still run within range of an enemy and choose your attack, but your pool of attacks is drawn literally from a deck of cards that represent various knives, spells, and maneuvers. Damage and other effects are still determined by RN Jesus, but his holy randomness takes the form of dice that you throw and re-roll. Different faces add damage, impose penalties, or activate special abilities. Card draw standing in for an ability list offers several new twists on these standard mechanics. For one, you don't just choose which abilities you take into combat, a la classes and FFT, but rather you weigh how often you want to see those abilities by building a deck. If you want strong healing options, add four copies of a healing card to your deck, but if you only want an emergency heal as an option, add just one and try and find and hold on to that card in your hand. This allowed designers to offer more powerful abilities without worrying that they would be overplayed by putting restrictions on the number of copies you can have in your deck. Chaining together multiple cards is definitely possible, allowing you to quickly run out of options if you aren't careful. Certain dice may offer you the chance to draw new cards automatically at the cost of damage or extra turns, but otherwise you'll see turns where you have to decide between charging your next opponent or spending a turn refilling your hand. As your character gains experience, they add new cards to their pool of available options, but the real gain are dice. Starting dice often give a 50-50 for either extra damage or reducing the damage from enemy counterattacks, but later dice can offer card draw, additional turns, healing, or even activate the powerful bonus effects of some of your cards. Late game dice can often add significant damage or allow you to chain most of your cards together. The game also offers a chance to customize your dice by sacrificing old low-level dice you aren't using anymore. This allows you to overwrite the face of a die, say removing a low-impacting healing face, to make room for a one-sixth chance of an additional action. Because about half of the faces on each die are locked and unchangeable, 
and because most of my dice ended up being fairly uniform by the end of the game, I can't say the rolling mechanic added much excitement to the game. However, the feast and famine of combat options created by the card draw system really forced me to think tactically in ways that FFT never could. I have to commend Cardboard Utopia for contributing a lasting improvement to the tactical RPG formula. Narratively, this game packs a real punch. I admit that I stopped after the second battle the first time I tried to play the game. It definitely takes time to gain momentum. But once a story gets going, it never stops laying into you. Turning all of tactical RPG story history on its head, Children of the Zodiacs makes you the brigands on the run from the law, just trying to stay one step ahead and survive. Nami, the Ebony Flame, is a notorious thief and warrior, but she's also a kid from the slums, poor and hungry. She has street smarts and cunning, but she doesn't understand the people she's robbing from, nor does she seem to understand why her world is divided by class. She's vindictive and ambitious, but often her perseverance is exposed as mere bullheadedness in the face of a situation she just can't see all of. This is a kid who is constantly reacting to the world around her. It may seem like she's making moves, but there's always someone else around her, putting a spin on it. Her sidekick, Pester, the apparent comedy relief, is a coward. And I get the real sense that they were more co-workers than friends. There are these little moments of optional dialogue that open up the characters' worldviews and really present them as the vulnerable children uh, in a way that's easy to overlook during the battles when you're cutting down what appear to be mature adults. I can't really say much more without ruining the experience for you, but this game doesn't pull any punches. The line-by-line -line writing could have been executed better, but the beats of the plot, the main events of the story, are strung together masterfully. The turns of the story are hardly cliched, and if you ever find yourself rolling your eyes at most game narratives, I think you will be pleased by this one. Finally, there are two aspects that stand out to me as important about this game. One good, and one not so great. To get the bad out of the way first, I found the late game play to be fairly solvable. Your three-man band can be built in several ways, but it's possible to get both strong healing and extra turns for your whole party off of a single character allowing you to build the other two into glass cannon damage dealers. Bursting down the weakest targets is a first order optimal strategy that this game does not dodge well. However, the game really delivers on convenience factors that I hope every tactical RPG will emulate in the future. You are fully free to watch all of your enemies take their turns, see their roles in order to determine what their strengths are, but once you fail a mission and have to replay it, the option to fast forward through enemy turns is invaluable. Really, we should all be having a forehead slapping duh moment that this hasn't been implemented before. Allowing the dice rolls to be automatic saves a little time too, but the big time saver comes from the option to adjust enemy levels to your character's current level, preventing the need to grind. So that's my recommendation. I think Children of the Zodiacs is a solid game, due for a revival of interest as soon as the next AAA tactical RPG is released to peak public interest while it fails to deliver. Children of the Zodiacs. Go play it.